Hello, hello guys. How are we doing? I hope you all had a lovely weekend. Today's video is going to be a settings video. Now, I know I did one recently. Well, I say recently. It was back when Vanguard first dropped. Um, but things have changed a little bit since then. Those were my settings for pubs. And pubs is a hell of a lot easier than ranked, especially when you're playing at that master and challenger level. Um, now, I, I'm pretty much sit around master level at the moment. So this is probably what it's. This is what I'm using it for. Um, yeah, but I do want to say this isn't a PC. I don't want to, I don't have a PC. This is an Xbox Series X, so these settings are for console only. Obviously, there's some which translate to PC, but you'll be able to tell as you go through. Um, but yeah, I have a console, so you're not going to see any really in-depth display settings like you usually have with a PC. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Uh, so I play with a controller, specifically the Series X, uh, Series X, the Series Two Elite controller on the Xbox. Um, so yeah, that's the controller I'm running at the moment. I have a 10, 10, 10, 10 stick sensitivity. Um, I've played on a high sensitivity for a while. I don't recommend anyone jump into 10, 10 if they're playing at 4, 4. It's a completely individual thing, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm, if you're beaming on 4, 4, if you're beaming on 5, 5 or whatever, um, do what's fit for you. Obviously, if it's too high for you, lower it. If you're missing shots, if you're a bit wavy, you're shooting wind, lower it. Um, if you're not quite as snappy as you need to be, make it higher. Um, it's really something you need to play with and it's super individual, so I wouldn't recommend just following by the by with this um as i said 10 10 cents is very high so i have to counteract that by having a custom sensitivity per zoom so na when i ads um with a low zoom gun so if i've got an automaton with like a regular iron uh red dot sight or uh like an mp40 with an iron sight uh, it's at 0.8 sensitivity uh, so that basically means i'm playing on an 8 8 sensitivity when i ads because it's whatever that is this figure here times by sensitivity you have here everything else is on a one just because i like my snipers snappy um when i'm playing with a sniper i want to be able to just flick onto someone make those really quick adjustments um so yeah that's what that is uh the button layout preset i have is tactical which basically means i crouch with my right stick and punch with my b or circle whatever controller you play with however as i said i do have in a series two elite controller which means i do have two back paddles one being jump one being melee um Jumping is essential for you to be able to slide cancel um, uh, and jump around corners and jump shot. Uh, and I do really like the right stick being crouch or prone. If you don't have an elite controller, I would recommend, or like a scuff controller, I would recommend probably having um, some form of bump, uh, not bump jumper, stick and move is what I used to play on, which is basically what essentially is uh, right stick becomes jump, which means you can jump shot, which is a lot more useful than... Uh, or actually, I don't know. I, I think I'd still stick with tactical, but slide cancel is much more of a usable um, mechanic than jumping, in my in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's how I play. So I've got uh, punch and jump as my paddles, and then my right stick is crouch slash prone. Um, everything else is standard here. I'm only going to really be really running through the things that are a bit different to what you guys are probably usually seeing a lot of set of videos because you know. It's boring to just walk through every single thing. Um, but if there is anything you're not sure about, feel free to pause the video at any point. And if you always have any, if you any, have any questions whatsoever, I do like to reply to all my comments. Um, so make sure you guys leave that down below if you have any questions. Um, aim response cover have a standard. Now this is a bit of a weird one. I have because I have an elite controller. There are custom settings within the controller itself. So no matter what game I play, I have the same aim response curve type. It makes it a lot easier when I'm jumping from this to Halo, from Halo to Apex. Um, that sort of thing. So my aim response curve type is standard on on COD here, as you can see. However, the actual settings for the controller are slightly different. They're a little bit more like dynamic is. So if I didn't have a custom controller, I'd probably play on dynamic. Um, now, unfortunately, I can't capture my settings within the Xbox themselves. So if you do have any questions about the controller setup, specifically uh, the Elite controller setup, drop a comment below and I'll help you out with that. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm running if you need be. Uh, I play with vibration on, bit strange, but it's I'm just used to it. I've always played with controller on, um, controller on, vibration on. Um, it's just hard thing for me to get used to not having. To be fair, uh, weapon fire threshold on, sensed instant, instant. Uh, da, 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 da. So my dead zones are two and three, and then four and four. You really want these. That should be this. That should be that. Uh, you really want these as low as you can possibly have it without getting. So these aren't a problem. The lower the better. But you, essentially it means the lower it is, the quicker your trigger is going to react to you pulling it. So your right trigger is probably really important if you shoot with it um, to have quite low. Now the stick input dead zones. 
you want this as low as possible without getting stick drift. You'll know if you're getting stick drift if you're standing still, you've not got your hand on the controller whatsoever, and your player is either moving or looking in a certain way. It won't be fast, it'll be quite a slow drag, um, but if you are getting that, make your dead zone a little bit higher so that you don't get that because that can affect your aim. Oh, uh, that's pretty much it for the controller settings. Now moving on to the gameplay settings, I get target aim assist on. You definitely want aim assist on. Um, now here I've you've got um, this is this ADS aim assist is purely for zombies or campaign. I have it off because when I play on campaign or zombies or whatever, I don't want to be snapping on people. It automatically trains my brain to be doing bad things. Um, weapon mount activation obviously in ranked. There's no mounting, so this isn't a problem. Similar to that, uh, depleted ammo weapon switch. This does scream me a little bit, but when you have no ammo in your gun. Um, this will automatically switch it for you. Although, I, in my head, I know I need to switch it myself, so I sometimes do a double switch. Um, but yeah, this I have on. And if, you, if you've if you run out of ammo frequently, I'd recommend having this turned on. But it's ranked. You're dying quite a lot. I don't think you're going to be running out of ammo too frequently. Blind fire, again, not a Vanguard. Ranked mechanic. Uh, I have the airborne automatic mantle as partial. Um, this is the best of both worlds. So if you have it on, you'll be mantling everything. You'll be losing gunfights just because you are man. It will just mantle over things that you don't want to, and it will really screw you over in gunfights. So if you have this on, turn it off, um, or have it partial. Now partial means you've got to press jump twice to mantle, rather than just you know it automatically doing it. And off is you have to completely do it manually, obviously. Um, yeah, I would recommend having this off. Uh, partial, sorry. Uh, mantle stance Q. Um, obviously you don't you're not mantling so you don't essentially it means that having it on uh, your inputs are applied at the end of the mantle so for example if you are mantling and then you want to shoot straight after if you're pressing your right trigger during the mantle it will do it straight after you finish mantling so I like that uh, now this is a funny one tax sprint now in my tips and tricks I did uh, in my last video uh, I said people sprint far too much, and that's because they have auto tax on. I completely understand why, because it saves your left hat, left thumb and your controller from a lot of damage. Because uh, you, in order to tax sprint in this situation, you've got to double tap it, or in the single sprint, you just single tap it. Uh, but as I said, it gets you killed quite a lot because you're constantly sprinting, and you make your uh, ADS time worse. It makes your sprint to fire time worse. Would not recommend having this. Um, if you're finding out, if you're thinking that you're losing a lot of gunfights because you're just sprinting, turn this off. Either have it completely off, or what I like to have it is automatic sprint, which means that just moving your left stick without clicking it in will sprint you, but it won't tack sprint you, which means it will be like, it's a, it's a happy medium. It saves your left thumb somewhat, um, but if you do want to tack sprint, you still have to double tap it, which is a bit of a bummer, but it means you're a little bit more in control of what's happening. If you don't want to sprint, it won't sprint. Um, yeah, that's that's that's, uh, that's my humble opinion anyway. Um, also move forward off sprint cancels reload on this is quite nice it's something I've used for a lot of times uh, for a lot of the years in COD basically if you're reloading and a lot of what people do is when cause if, if you guys don't know you reload the bullets go in your gun and there's a little bit of an animation after it can only be a couple of seconds um, and essentially what a lot of people do is when they see the number in the bottom right hand corner of the screen fill up to whatever the magazine should be they YY just to say cancel the animation but in my instance all I do is sprint so because I've got automatic sprint on I reload, I notice the bullets have gone into the gun and I just move forward and that cancels the reload animation and then I'm ready to go. I find that a little bit more efficient than pressing YY. Uh, sprinting door dash on. Bash, door dash, door bash. Door dash is a, a fast food service. <laughs> door bash on, parachute auto deploy on, obviously not applicable for ranked. Uh, now slide behavior, you want to have it tapped. This is the most efficient way you can slide cancel. Um, a similar thing here, you want it as toggle rather than, uh, rather than hold. It just saves your thumbs a lot of work. This is the best setup for slide canceling. Uh, and I would recommend changing it if you are struggling to slide cancel. And off site behavior hold, you don't want to toggle it. Um, again, hold, hold, hold. Uh, this is a very personal one, uh, so it depends what you're really used to. Now, I have it on prioritized interactors simply because I'm used to it when I used to play Warzone quite a lot. Basically, it, it, if you want to reload, basically, if you want to reload you can just tap to reload. However, if you've got a gun in front of you ready to pick up and you still want to reload, you have to hold reload. Now, I don't mind that so much, but I think I prioritize that rather than... Cause I like to be able to tap to pick up things. And this is... this is I prefer it this way. Um, and it's something I've just gotten used to. So again, don't listen too much about this one. Just do whatever you feel is right for you. Uh, scoreboard behavior toggle. Uh, but that's not really that much not that important. 
uh, camera recenter, short delay. Um, I think this is just, I think that's just standard. I haven't really changed that, but that's when you're in a vehicle or kill streak, so it's not too much of a problem. Uh, anyway, it's here enough. So these are vehicle things. So that's it with the gameplay. Now moving on to graphics. So as I said, I play on a Xbox Series X and I have a 20, I have a 120 hertz refresh rate monitor. So thankfully, I play on 120 hertz. Um, it makes a hell of a lot of difference. I didn't think it did, but I got this upgrade during Cold War and it helped a lot. Um, brightness is completely up to you guys, but I have it on 58. Again, it's just dependent on what monitor you got. And color customization, I would fully recommend having it on filter too. It makes things a lot more vibrant. If you're struggling to see people, make this change. It's, um, it's a game changer. Uh, and make sure this is set to both, so it's not just the menus or the world that have it. It's both. Um, yeah, and you can have a you can have a play around with the color palette. I see a lot of people changing it, but I'm happy with default. It's not, you know, it's easy. Um, but yeah, make sure this is filter one or two, depending on just what you find more vibrant. But I I like filter two. Filter 2 makes it a little bit more vivid and uh, the names show up a lot more. Uh, moving down to uh, Field of View, I have at 104. I've been playing as an AR more recently, so I might, I'm tempted to lower it, but I, I think anywhere between 95 and 105 is uh, like a safe bet. You don't want it any less than that, you don't want it any more than that. Um, 100, if you're not sure, 100 is a pretty good number to have it on. Uh, camera movement, you want as least as possible. Motion blur off, motion blur off, depth of field off, fidelity Ah, okay, Fidelity FX CAS you want turning off as well. Um, basically, it, it helps you reduce packet loss. You want this off. If you want to reduce packet loss, if you're finding you're getting packet loss a lot, turn that off um, as well as texture streaming, which we'll get to shortly. Yeah, you definitely want all of these off. Ah, here it is. On demand for texture streaming, you want off. If you have it on, um, you will lag slightly more. Your ping won't be as good and you will... Uh, you will have packet loss, so turn this off if you want to reduce that. Um, it made it made a bit of a change for me. Obviously, I still get packet loss because it's Vanguard after all, but turn that off if you want to reduce it at least. Um, another graphic setting that is on Xbox is um, like a, a color, like a color um, enhancer. Now it does a similar thing to what this color customization does, and it probably is available on PC, probably on PS4 as well. Um, I don't really know what the PS4 software is like. Um, or PS5, sorry, um, but you can go into your settings and basically change your color palette to make it a little bit more vibrant. If you want to know about that, if you're interested in that at all, drop down a comment and I can talk you through that in steps by steps in the comment section. Um, but unfortunately, I can't share my Xbox home screen because I'm only capturing on the Xbox. So um, yeah, but if you are if you are unsure and you want to know about it, let me know down below and I'll be able to help you out. Moving on to audio, uh, mass volume 100%. Just I want to hear things. That's fairly obvious. Music volume I have at zero. When you're playing S and D, the last thing you want is the bums, the bums, the drums, the bums. What am I saying? The drums beating in the background. You want the you don't want the music player in because I know what it's like. You, you it's a one v one. It gets to 30 seconds and the the music starts booming through your headset and it just puts you off. You can't hear anything if you're trying to sound hoarse. So I have that zero. Uh, dialogue volume, a similar thing. Um, don't really want to be hearing someone shouting down my ear when I'm playing S&D and I'm trying to clutch up a situation, so I have that slightly lower. Um, yeah, sound effects volume 100% as well. Now, I've been playing with this. It doesn't really matter which one you have. The best thing I like to do is switch it every so often. So I've been playing on Classic for like maybe a month or two now, so I'm just going to change it to Vanguard just because it makes it feel a, bit, a little bit more fresh, makes the game feel a little bit more fresh, and I find changing it has a little bit of a placebo effect that I think my, hits, my shots are hitting a little bit more when I make a different hit marker sound. So um, yeah, that is what it is, but it doesn't matter which one, whichever one you play on. Um, now I have it on home theater, but you should have it on headphones if you were in headphones, definitely. I don't know why I'd have it on home theater. I must've changed that at some point when I was playing through a TV, but yeah, definitely have it on headphones if you're in headphones. Uh, just go with whatever you're using. Uh, kill shit music on, so this is really pretty much essential just for the flamethrower, but again, not a rank problem. Uh, mono audio off so you can sound hold more and voice chat this is all just preferable like personal preference do what you need to do with that um now here i have d d d d subtitles on you don't really need these on this was i was playing campaign recently but i'd have them off it saves a less distraction on the screen um let's see what we have here d d d d d d d This is all, again, personal preference, but what I do like to have on my screen is a server latency shown just so I know how much ping I'm getting. Because when you're on console, the only way you can check what ping you're on 
is by pressing start and looking in the menu. Um, so pop this on so that you can see what ping you're getting. And you can also you know, give you a little bit of information on packet loss as well if you turn that on. FOV counter, I'm not too fussed about. I might put it on just for the crack of it, but it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, system clock hidden, don't really need my uh, the time on the top left of my screen. Um, now, you can have these, if you look at the top left of my screen right now, you'll see I've got latency, packet loss, and FOV. Now, you can have them bigger if you suffer from like not being able to read it. If your eyesight's not that great, you obviously you want it bigger, but I like it smaller, it invades less of the screen. Um, and it just looks a little bit neater. So have that, again, personal preference, but I like to have it smaller just so that I can see more of the actual screen and what's happening. Player names. Have the full name. Have the full name. You're more likely to notice an enemy player if you can see more of their name than you are not. So I'd turn that to full name 100%. Uh, crosshair, crosshair visibility you want on. Crosshair dobbing, dobbing you want on. Uh, off. No, it doesn't really matter. This isn't too much of a problem. On's fine. A minimap shape you want square just so you can see more of the map. This is a must. You, if you look at the diagram on the right, you can see how much you actually lose by having it as a circle. So this must be a square and you want it rotating so that it's facing whatever way you're facing as well. Um, otherwise, it's hard to call out on that sort of thing. Uh, horizontal compass on. Now, this is something they had bought in a Modern Warfare 19. Uh, you can have this off considering there's a minimap, but I prefer to have this on just because I'm used to it. Again, it depends on whether the personal preference completely. Uh, the damage makes or oh, damage based hit markers I have on, but again, it's this is all very personal preference. I won't worry too much about that. Uh, keyboard and mouse, obviously, there's nothing here, and then account and settings, obviously, nothing there either. So that's going to be it. I hope if you have any questions, feel free to drop it down below, and I will answer your query as soon as possible. Um, but that's that. That's my settings. I hope you enjoyed. Um, yeah, I've got some game ahead coming up in the next couple of days. It's a pretty banging one. It's the game that got me into Master. So if you are interested in that, make sure you guys stick around to the channel because that will be coming this week. And yeah, that will do me. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.